I'm here this time. Yes, yay. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Terry from Love That Olive, as you know. And we're going to get started on, what is this, our third or fourth cheese? Zoom I don't meeting. know. <laughs> I'm not sure. I lost count. Not we enough. Some, <laughs> yes, we have some great ideas for you again tonight. And we're going to do some fun tasting and things as we go along. So, Terry. Introduce yourself once again for those that have not seen you or haven't been part of our cheese classes yet. Sure. Yeah, I'm Carrie, and um, I work as a cheese monger, which means I just get to play with lots of delicious artists and cheeses. Um, I'm employed at a local grocery store, but haven't been able to be there since March. And um, on my my side hustle is the uh, forage to fromage. It's become my main hustle, <laughs> having to be home. And uh, so, I don't know, we just love to, cheese loves lots of different things. Um, you can have, you know, just taste it plain, pair it with anything. So Terry and I have a lot of fun just um, coming up with fun serving ideas. And um, tonight it's all about Car Valley. And then a little bit when you want me to talk more about Car Valley cheese, it's all from the same creamery. Um, but um, yeah, we can get started with whatever else you want to introduce, Terry. Okay, and this creamery is in Wisconsin, correct? Right, it's in Laval, Wisconsin. Okay. Um, it has uh, been open for more than a hundred years since 1902. And uh, Sid Cook is the master cheesemaker and uh, he has the most awards of any cheesemaker in the United States on his cheeses. Uh, the vast amount and types of cheese is crazy as to what they produce, absolutely amazing. And it's all three milks, it's sheep, goat, cow milk. Um, and so Car Valley is, it was basically in our backyard when we lived down in southwest, uh, southwestern Wisconsin in Viroqua. Uh, Laval, it's a, I mean, it's a beautiful area. It's called the Driftless Region because it's where the glaciers didn't go. They just dumped everything. And so if you've ever been in southwestern Wisconsin, you know how beautiful it is. The hills and the coolies and the valleys, um, it's, a, it's just a beautiful, beautiful area. And a lot of the small farms can can succeed in that area because of the cheesemakers in the state um, bringing in their milk. And uh, in order to make cheese in Wisconsin, you have to have a license. And outside of Switzerland, Wisconsin is the only place where you have to be licensed cheesemaker in order to produce cheese. And really? That, that can take 10 to 15 years to get to that point. So wow. So you have to have a little experience behind you. Just a little, and there's lots of cer uh, certifications that you can add to the top of your uh, master cheesemaker license. So you're certified in Colby, you're certified in Swiss, you're certified in different styles of cheese, and that's where the education keeps ramping up. <laughs> well, I discovered Cavalli when I was with you out in San Francisco. We went out to the San Francisco Fancy Food Show last January, and of course, we eat our way through that show. And they have a whole huge area of cheeses from all around the world. And that's where I discovered the vanilla cheese, which I absolutely fell in love with, that they've had a lot of awards with, I believe. Yep. And so that's one we're having tonight. But that's one of my very favorite cheeses now. I just, it's, it's really creamy and wonderful and has that soft vanilla flavor at the end. So that's how, and then you introduced me to a lot of their other ones. Yeah, they have a, like I said, they have a vast amount. My, uh, my catalog is, you know, six pages thick of the different types of cheeses that they produce. Um, we're we're going to be, um, actually, a lot of the ones tonight are very, very useful in the cooking. So it's working out really well with your products, Terry. Oh, good. Yes, Carrie's going to show us some demonstrations on how to use um, these different cheeses different ways besides we have. Now, on testing tonight, we're going to show you, as you'll see in your kits, you have a variety of crackers. We have a beer bread. The beer bread, we're going to say, goes with one cheese and a topping, but there's no rules. If you want to play around and change things up as we go along, that's absolutely fine on it. We're introducing a new balsamic tonight. You guys have it. You're the first one to have it out of the batch. It's the new cinnamon pear balsamic. And it is, if you just open up your bottles and smell it, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, I could not wait to get this in for fall. By the way, I should, I should tell you, we have everyone muted at this time just because it's hard to get a class going if we're all talking. At the end, we will unmute everybody and then we open it up for extra um, questions. But if you have questions through the night, just go, Paige, where would they like to go for that? 
go to chat, put your question in there, um, and then we will get that question answered for you. So whenever you have a question, just throw it into that chat and we will get it answered. Um, also in your kit, we have some different sauces. We have the cheeses that we're gonna talk about tonight. There is a little bit in our dessert area that we'll have towards the end of the chat. So the first one we're gonna start with, Carrie, is we're using the cinnamon pear balsamic with it. Uh, and what cheese would you like us to start with? I did this one. This is kind of a breakfast, uh, the vanilla Cardona. Um, these are younger cheeses. They're super melty. Uh, and uh, so what I did was I, I actually toasted my apple fritter bread, put the cheese on top. Actually, I used my air fryer, but uh, put the cheese on top and melted that. I'll show you a little picture here real quick. And I'm going to drizzle it with a um, cinnamon yes. pear balsamic. Now, this is the apple fritter bread that we have at the store. It's a beer bread. And all you do is add a bottle of beer to it, mix it up and put it in the oven. You can also, this is also wonderful if you wanna use a cider, um, hard cider, which gives it a little bit more of that apple tones to it. And tonight you can build it by putting the, for us, we can just put that vanilla right on top and then put a little of the, the cinnamon pear right over the top, or you can melt it right in the microwave like um, Carrie's doing. Now, take it over, Carrie. Tell us about it. Uh, well, you know, what's better than melted cheese? I'm sorry. Um, and with Nothing. That, <laughs> right? <laughs> Especially now, it's actually like warm outside, but, you know, as we come into the holiday season, cooking uh, and comfort foods, uh, cooking with cheese is always a huge question that I get, um, you know, ramped up, shushed up mac and cheese, all that kind of stuff. Uh, what can I do to make this a little more interesting? Why is this not melting well? I get a lot of those questions, but this one is just going to be a, I, you can see I toasted the bread, melted the cheese, and uh, drizzled it with the apple pear. Cinnamon pear. C cinnamon pear. Yes, thank you. And actually, if you wanted to um, add to this, uh, to make it, <laughs> we'll try and make it healthy, right? Uh, maybe some sauteed apples or pears uh, along with your bread and the melty cheese and the drizzle of cinnamon pear, uh, cinnamon pear balsamic. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Can't say that. <laughs> There's so many words to these condiments, Terry. You just correct me as we go. All right. <laughs> that would be on there, having those um, apples like or pears added butter you know it's basically seasoned butter and it's a very very melty cheese i, I uh, you could also add you know make the sand that can you say that again terry I, I you were freezing a little bit for me yes i'm you're freezing too so our wi-fi is acting up a little bit here so we'll have to bear with us tonight <laughs> i said you could add a little bit of ham to that to make a nice sandwich Ooh. Oh, you know, it'd be really fantastic is basically like a Monte Cristo, a stuffed French toast. Oh, wouldn't that be good with the vanilla Cardona, a little ham, and then um, the apple fritter bread and uh, batter it, maybe? Mm. Try it. That'd and be it'd, very good. That'd be yummy. Everyone would keep coming <laughs> back for breakfast. Maybe you want that, maybe you don't. I have no idea. Yeah. Oh, the cinnamon <laughs> pear is a great one because besides doing it with these cheeses and things like that, I've been doing it with pork, pork chops, pork tenderloins. It's great with shrimp, but I'm loving it on squash and sweet potatoes, roasting them or any of the root vegetables and roasting them right now. That, that works good. really good. Oh, going over here. There we go. Now, the, and the beer breads, there's lots of flavors, but I decided with the cinnamon pear like this, I really like the apple fritter. And that it ha tells you you can make a glaze with powdered sugar for that too and melt. I didn't even put the glaze on this way. I wouldn't want to have it sweet that way. That would be delicious. I mean, the sweet and um, uh, tang. I mean, basically these vinegars have like everything, every taste that uh, you want to take and you want to have on your palate is in like a spoonful of this. So these are all just serving suggestions. Um, um, but um, if you just want to settle up with a spoon and a bottle of this, I'm not going <laughs> to. I would not. It's really good. I can just drink this one. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
It definitely screams fall. It does. Even though I'm looking outside and seeing snow still, but. <laughs> it's melting, it's melting. It is, it is. We're melting, well, we're melting cheese today. <laughs> I know. Now, what would you like to do as our second one tonight? I think we're on to cheese curds. And um, yes. if you are from, have been, or anywhere near Wisconsin, you know all about cheese curds, right? And these are also Carvalli's curds. Pretty much every creamery makes some sort of curd. It's a very quick return on their money. Uh, they can get that to the storefront in a short period of time and not have to, they're not obviously not aged. So they're not sitting on that inventory for years. Uh, it's a good way to get some upfront cash. And so the cheese curds, I just like to eat them fresh. Um, Unfortunately, the only ones we get here in Minnesota are refrigerated, so they've lost all of that happy squeak entirely, but we can still play with them. So my cauldron that's going over here. <laughs> my Carrie, I'm going to quickly show yes. we are using the apple maple bacon jam with this one, which is a great jam, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but we do have a question, Carrie. Would balsamic be good in green tea? Would the balsamic be good in green tea? We have a lot of people that add our balsamics and some people that add olive oils to teas. So you have to try to get your right flavor, but I would think a cinnamon pear would be great in a green tea. Oh, I never thought of that to a tea. That's perfect. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Now, everyone has their um, apple maple, so you can try it with your cheese curds. Um, you can try it on a cracker with it, however you want to do it. But Carrie, show us some of the examples you're doing besides just eating them. <laughs> well, with the apple maple bacon, um, once again, super seasonal. And this is a basic pan fried cheese curd. Uh, it's called pan fried, but this is a cheese curd that likes to melt, which is a good thing. Um, some of them will fry and get brown on the edges. This one is a take that I actually stole this recipe a little bit from Redhead Creamery in Bruton, Minnesota. Uh, they do pan fried cheese curds and they take their curds and dress them up in all different ways. And so I started with just a little bit of the peppered bacon olive oil, just in case the curds felt like sticking. And um, the apple maple bacon, put the curds in there, put it on low. And oh, yeah, okay, sorry. I'm going to have to get my baguette and, I'm, and Terry's going to have to talk. Oh, yum. That <laughs> looks so absolutely delicious. And so the hot, so you use the pepper bacon olive oil first, and then you add a little of the jam and the cheese at the same time yep. and do it. And then serve it on crackers or baguettes. Absolutely. And I couldn't stop myself. I put, I got some bacon. I was going to say you put bacon on top, didn't you? <laughs> What's better oh, than bacon? Yummy. What's better with bacon than bacon? Oh my gosh. This would be <laughs> a great thing to have during um, mm. watching football or having for holidays, especially if we're having small groups for the holidays this year, that's a nice one to have. Is that one, is that something you could do in like a small crock pot to keep it warm or oh, will it seize up? Mm -hmm. No, um, over time it will. Okay. Some of my Wisconsin wine. <laughs> Very good. Um, over time it will. So it's best to do it like, um, it's almost a performance cheese. Um, it's something that you can do on the grill. If you have a, uh, like our last class, uh, a grill proof um, container like the cast iron or whatever, you put it on the grill, you set it to the side and then all your guests will just kind of get in there with their baguette or whatever and start nibbling on that. But uh, the, after, over time, the cheese will seize up. Okay. So you keep it really low. I've had that sitting on the stove on low, low, low uh, for quite some time. And it's been bubbling along even because of the oil and the sugar and the fat that's in there, it gets up to temperature very quickly. So it's not something to crank it to high and fry. Keep it low, very low. This would be something that'd be fun to take and put on little skewers with fresh fruit and have it in the middle and then just brush it with like your, any of our jams or especially if they, maple bacon you can even put some bacon in the middle or okay. ham or something like that and make it a skewer cold one i saw a um and i'll share it with you um a recipe one time that was stuffed bacon wrapped tater tots oh 
How do so you do that? They slid open a tater tot, stuffed a curd in there, and wrapped it with bacon to close it up and bake them off. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That sounds delicious. You could even put them side by side and wrap yeah. the bacon around them too. Kind of a cow in a blanket kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that'd be good. Curds are so versatile. Everybody loves their cheese curds. Um, I do a lot of appetizer picks with cheese curds. So, you know, line up an olive, a little cocktail onion, a cherry tomato, and maybe a fold up of some salami or something with the cheese curd on an appetizer pick. And then um, it's all in one bite. It's a, and then of course, drizzle with, would be excellent with like the aged balsam. Any, anything you got in your store, Terry, would be a fantastic drizzle on that. And then your um, guests can just, uh, you know, walk by and pop one of those in. Uh, could you take and put a couple cheese curds in the middle of a croissant with some jam and roll it up like a Pillsbury croissants and then bake them? Oh, you could. Um, the cheese curd might seize right back up and not go super melty because it, mm -hmm. as soon as it cools down a little bit, they seize it. Um, they get go back to hard very quickly. Okay. They don't stay melty. They're not the best for like a grilled cheese or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, they, they do tend to get back to their kind of firm state. Um, and it, the science of melt is very complicated. Uh, it depends on the amount of water and um, the level of uh, acid in the cheese itself. So that's what makes some of them very, very melty. And other ones, they just separate into uh, like cheese granules and oil. Um, and mm -hmm. so that's a, that's a whole nother topic, Terry, if we want to yes, get that's cooking true. <laughs> mac and cheese, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, the apple maple bacon jam is incredible over baked brie. I do a lot of this on sandwiches. It works really well. Finish off um, a pork tenderloin or a chicken after it comes out of the oven, slice it, and then drizzle that across the top. Do your roasted uh, vegetables, Brussels sprouts, squash, sweet potatoes, um, any of those root vegetables, roast them up and then toss them in the apple maple jam. That one's really, really good. And I use, there's quite a few varieties in the olive oils that um, work really well with that flavor profile. So we can do a lot of really fun things. And don't just think of a jam as sweet and you can only use it on toast or a bagel or an English muffin. They go so well with savory items and fruits and all kinds of different things. So that opens up all your vegetable toppings really easily, all your meats and seafood to a whole new world of what's in your cupboards already. That's uh, on a burger, perfect. Oh, yum. That's if it makes it out of the jar. Cheese, uh, anything other than a spoon. Yes, we just had a comment from someone, apple maple bacon jam would be awesome on a grilled cheese. On top, yes, yes, absolutely, on a grilled cheese. Um, yeah. Even if you do go ahead and spread it on top of uh, brie, you can, because of the sugar content in there, you can brulee it a little bit, which means, you know, just kind of bring a little bit of a char to it and then it warms up the brie also. Okay. Um, add some fun sugars. I also do um, my lunch a lot of times when I'm at work is um, just a piece of smoked salmon and crackers and cheese. And then I pick one of my jams to have with it. More of that crust, but, uh, oh, there's that. Ooh, very nice. Any kind of grilled salmon or smoked salmon. Is there more questions in the chat? <laughs> Not yet. Okay, okay. <laughs> what's our what's our next one? I think we're gonna go on to the blue. Ooh, I think so too. So this so is a with the blue, you need to get your blue <laughs> and your bourbon honey stick. Tell me the best way to get into this stick, Terry. Um using just a scissor on top. Okay. Just cut the top off and then just bring it down. Like you okay. put a straw. So are these used a lot in like hot beverages too? Or you kind of- They are teas. They're, you, okay. they're made kind of for tea sticks and stuff like that. Hot chocolate. Okay. And things. So what kind of tea do you think would work well with this, um, the bourbon honey? 
I wonder if like an Earl Grey would be nice. Okay. I think we're oh, right. I bet that'd be really nice. So are you getting oh. it out of there? I'm just uh, pausing a minute because we both seem to be seizing up. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Yeah. So the, the blue that you have is a smoked blue. Uh, it's a cow's milk blue. And uh, um, a smoked blue is just a really unique combination of flavors. I don't know how many folks out there are super duper blue fans. This one is also really melty. So it'd be good on a, a steak, uh, make a compound butter, maybe even with, uh, with the blue and some uh, fresh ground pepper, some herbs and stuff and plop that on top of a steak. What we're gonna do tonight, other than just, you know, dig into it with a fork and with a little bit of the honey on top, I'm gonna put it on a baguette. And uh, I don't know how many, uh, this is one way a lot of people are love or hate blue cheese. And a lot of folks say that they'd like blue cheese, put in a dressing and a lot of it's visual, you know, they see them old, they're like, nah, not gonna happen. And really the pungent, Ding sometimes of a blue cheese is too, uh, is not palatable for them. So what I do is um, I take a little bit of softened butter. And spread that first on the baguette. The butter, the fat in there just kind of eases that blue into submission, <laughs> I guess is one way to put it, and adds a lot of flavor to the blue itself. And then, like I said, this is a smoked blue. This one would be a lot of fun with any jam you've got in your store, Terry. Uh, it's a smoked blue. It is very smoky. I love that. Really good. Some sandwich, um, anything like if, that. You could find some Someone asked if Roquefort is less pungent. Uh, it's different. It's uh, Roquefort is a sheep's milk. And uh, so it's going to be very, very different um, flavor profile just in general. And it's super duper melty. It's kind of in the middle. I've had stronger ones than that. Uh, but uh, Roquefort is a really nice. It finds its way into dressings and it finds its way into melty uh, applications. Um, as far as the strength, this is more, this is also a mild not super mild, but it's a milder blue. Um, Maytag can be very, very pungent. The bourbon with the smokiness point is, is wonderful. One of my favorites. It's a very well, yeah, bourbon is. I, bourbon and cheese is like the most popular pairing application these days. And yes. um, having our bourbon it, balsamic is good with blue cheeses. That is awesome, and blue cheese loves honey in general. So this this. <laughs> Terry, this appetizer can't go wrong. No. <laughs> you know, the other thing I really learned from you too is um, I was not a blue cheese fan, but not all blue cheeses are created the same. Just no. like olive oils, they're not all created the same. So I have found so many wonderful blue cheeses. Um, if you go to Byerly's and ask their counter which one are award-winning blue cheeses, you tend to get one that are so smooth and they are not overpowering. They're just absolutely beautiful. We gotta wait. We think Carrie's frozen there for a minute. So I'll keep talking about it until we get her back. Um, so on that, that bagel looks absolutely delicious, but I need the honey. Oh, there you are. Uh, where You're your back. tastes are going to be. And uh, uh, there's Blue Breeze as well, which are a bunch of, okay. Say about the Blue Breeze. Oh, the Cambazola Blue, it's a uh, Blue Brie. So it's got a lot more, um, the pungentness of the blue is going to be a lot lessened in that, but you gotta like a brie. So that's a, that's a fun one to try. One of my favorites I just mentioned earlier was a Point Reyes, that's a California one. It's a rindless blue and it is, it absolutely melts 
melts in your mouth. It's a really nice, beautiful buttery. That is a good starter one. Mm, it's wonderful. Keep going, I'm just, to be I'm, <laughs> I really like this honey with that. That is so good. And then bourbon honey, we have also orange blossom honey. We have a lot of wonderful honeys in our store. Um, the vanilla honey or sea salt honey would also be delicious with this same type of things that we're doing with that. Now, Carrie, what is our mystery cheese of the night? Anybody <laughs> have a guess about our mystery cheese? Oh, you say the blue cheese name again. It is, uh, it's a smoked blue from Car Valley. Okay, so here's the mystery cheese. Yep, it's a, this is gonna be very, very familiar for a lot of you and completely foreign to others. It's a, it's a very cultural cheese. Uh, it's a, a take after Yusulipa. So it's, it's a bread cheese. You can see a little bit of brown on the edge, right? So it's actually a cheese that is browned in a pan or on the grill or whatever. And then it brings it, it doesn't melt. It just kind of gets back to the little gooey stage, a little bit of sponginess to it. And it's very, very mild. It's extremely mild. In fact, if you can just go run to the microwave and nuke it for like five, seven seconds, it's going to be a completely different cheese than when it's cold. Yes. Completely different. And they're in special little containers. So these are microwave safe. So you can put it in there. Now, what's the best way besides a cracker to eat those on? Uh, a toothpick. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's a, it's, I mean, it's a really interesting cheese. It's traditionally a breakfast cheese. You can see what I've done is I browned them in the pan, the cubes, and they just huh? brown up. They don't melt. It's usually, like I said, it's a breakfast cheese. So with a piece of toast and sweet jams is typically what is um, served with and your coffee in the morning. So okay. it's, 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 we've done them on the grill in the summer and they've been really fun. Mm -hmm. Well, it's we're trying it tonight with the original raspberry chipotle sauce. This is a major uh, award-winning sauce. Um, if anybody has gone to the Minnesota State Fair in the past and has gone up to what I still call it Machinery Hill, <laughs> but if you go up there to Giggles, um, it's a place that they win for their salmon almost every single year. They're in the top three things for best food. And that, this is the sauce they use on it. They're famous for that, using that sauce. So we thought this is, um, it has a little bit of sweetness from the raspberry. It has a little bit of a heat from the chipotle, not much. So we thought it'd be kind of fun to show because you use a toothpick, just kind of dipping it in there and trying. Carrie, that looks wonderful. Yeah, that's a, I, I was, as I was pouring that, I'm like, you know, pretzels, like oh. a, a pretzel bun. Yeah. Maybe just alongside uh, with it, especially with the, you know, the, um, the butteriness of a pretzel bun and uh, the chipotle sauce, the raspberry chipotle. I, why is raspberry chipotle so popular, Terry? I don't know, but it is, you know, it, I think it's because chipotle is not quite as strong as others. So it just works. And then you put the little bit of fruit in there. Maybe that's and what it's it is. great. It, it out a little bit. Now, when you put it in the pan, does, there ha does it have enough fat in there or do you add an oil to it? Um, this time I actually am browning it in the pan that I made the bacon in. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bacon grease in there. Ooh. It's always a good idea to start with just a touch, just in case your pan isn't seasoned well enough or it's not non-stick enough and it just wants to stick and then peel apart i've lost you know pieces of the brown part of the bread cheese into the bottom of the pan you pull it up and it's like still stuck down there so it doesn't hurt to start with either a really well seasoned pan uh, or one with a little bit of olive oil in the bottom and so that's where you can you know you can add whatever kind of flavor olive oil you want to that yeah. to coordinate them with the drizzle that's on top and i did do oh. uh, a little um Appetizer again. Well, not really. This is dinner, I think, actually. So I, I love I, this idea. I made some skewers. Oh, that pan's a little warm. With uh, 
pork and the bread cheese and some onions. And the bread cheese is in there. This one did melt just a little bit, but uh, then I glazed it with the raspberry chipotle. So you got cheese in the middle there. And that's just kind of a, that's a little eye opener for your guests, you know, to have like bread cheese hanging out in the middle of their kebab. I love that. <laughs> The bread cheese is a, it's a blank canvas. It's a lot like a, like I use goat cheese. It basically takes on whatever you want to do to it. And, I'd add um, some, I'd add some pineapple on there too. Absolutely. Yum. Definitely. That I thought so about good. tomatoes, but that's, I, I would go more, you know, towards the sweet savory versus like the tomato thing. Yeah. Uh, the pork and everything, but yeah, the pineapple would be delicious on there. Uh, I was thinking about how you were saying it's kind of a, can be a traditional breakfast food. And then just glaze wouldn't with that, the raspberry chipotle. Wouldn't you think it would be great to have that on Christmas morning with your eggs and make up some bacon and sausage and then you bring out this wonderful melted cheese? Oh yes. Oh, <laughs> that'd be so unique. No one would expect that for your Christmas morning. No, it's a, uh, you know, it's a very, um, uh, kind of brings people together like a fondue does, right? Yes. You have a hot cheese that's coming up. You got to eat it right now or there's no point. So it just kind of gathers everybody around the table and um, with their masks on, obviously. I'm just yes. Um, <laughs> my bread cheese mask on. my <laughs> son would be so happy if I brought that out for <laughs> breakfast. It's sizzling. <laughs> No, it's uh, it's uh, and it also if there's any kind of argument going on, it just kind of stalls everybody out. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yes, it that is so good. I can't believe after we microwaved it and after I tried it, oh my gosh, it has such a great flavor. What's the name of the mystery cheese? What's the name of the mystery cheese once again, Carrie? It's bread cheese. And this you can find at any grocery store, can't you, in the deli or in their specialty food or yeah, cheese it's, area? It's very common. It really is in our, our cheese cases, um, I think, because of our um, Scandinavian heritage, a lot like Yay Toast. You know, those are some of the ones that sell regularly. Um, and it's, but it's just been really interesting demoing that when I was still at work, uh, because, like I said, there's people that are extremely familiar with it. And, um, you know, don't even want to talk to me. They're like, yeah, I'm getting it for my grill because I always do. Um, and others that are just fascinated by it. And so so sometimes there's fun. different uh, flavors in it too. Yep. Uh, they do mix in some other flavors. The Car Valley ones have, um, I, you know, there's typically like something, an Italian seasoning or um, some uh, spicy pepper or bacon in the bread cheese itself. Okay. Uh, I find that I, I like it plain so I can play with it, but uh -huh. you know, whatever. And it's usually sold in like um, a little square. Pride is another brand that makes. Yep. And pre uh, uh, vacuum packed, cryovac, and you can see that I'm not really sure why they brown it. Maybe it's just to tell you that's what's supposed to happen with it, but because you're going to want to heat it up anyway. You don't want to just eat it with the brown bike. It's easy yes. to find. And if you can, or go to the Car Valley website, super responsive. And they, um, you know, you can get stuff shipped directly to your home. They ship overnight. So it's very reliable and very, uh, uh, it comes in good condition because it's shipped overnight. It's not spending three days on the road. That's mostly the upper Midwest. So if you're going to ship out to another state, it's going to take a little bit longer. But uh, um, I think our, my rep who has been putting up with me, Lacey is on the call tonight and she has been a godsend. And that's the only reason you have cheese in your mouth. <laughs> it's because of Lacey. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. We have two more questions, Carrie. Okay, uh, I'll okay. What is the website called? What is the website called? It's Car Valley, C A R R Valley Cheese. Okay. And then how does the pork cook without melting the cheese? Does it still hold its shape while cooking? How does the pork cook without melting the cheese? Does it still hold its shape? The cheese, yep, it still holds its shape. That's kind of the idea. And I have some big chunks of pork on here, and this is a, a loin, so I would 
probably do it so there's no pink in the middle. And it's held on. It's done really well. It's uh, um, the cheese is puddled out in a couple areas, just kind of depending on where they hit the heat more. Um, I have a grill pan over here. If it's on the grill itself, I get a little bit more heat all the way around or in the oven all the way around. The grill pan is just kind of hitting on one side and then the next. And so it's melting some edges of the cheese, but not a lot, truthfully. Um, but yeah, big pieces of pork and small pieces of cheese and they have, they're held on. Wow, definitely. that's great. I had that same question. I, I did it all together and nothing was pre-cooked. It was all raw going on to that skewer. In the chat, the link to the website mm -hmm. is there. Oh, in the chat, we put the link to the website right there. So you have it. Now, Thanks, the original, <laughs> yeah, my, my tech person, right? I know, it was her husband. Oh, Mike did it. <laughs> oh, Mike did it. Your hey, husband. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong person. <laughs> okay. The original raspberry chipotle sauce is fantastic. As I said on salmon, I do that a lot. I like to put it on chicken. I saute shrimp in it. It's great on sandwiches, roasted vegetables. There is nothing you can make that this does not go on and change up. And people think it's phenomenal. Like you went to all this incredible work for it. It's a really nice sauce. It's a little bit thinner, so it's not one that I would maybe use as a topping on something, but if you're doing hamburgers, you can mix it right into the hamburger meat or meatloaf or pour it across the top while you're cooking it, things like that, just like you would a barbecue sauce. But it's right. absolutely the, wonderful. The glaze, I, I put it on towards the end of cooking. Yes. So, you know, with the sugar content, so, you want to do that towards the end, just like, like you said, barbecue, so. Exactly. The same as when I'm roasting vegetables, I'll, I'll roast them and then I'll put on any of these sauces at the end and just bring it around. The only time I put the sauces on ahead of time is if I'm marinating a meat ahead of time with it. So that's a fantastic one. And there's a lot of things you can do with that one. And we will um, be coming out with quite a few recipes that work with that one. I've been working on those right now also. I think one time we when we did a holiday it might have been your holiday open house. Remember, I marinated bacon mm -hmm. in one of these sauces. Yes, it was the raspberry chipotle. Um, I think it was the tri. Was it okay? <laughs> and then I sprinkled some sugar on top before baking it in the oven, and um, it was like bacon crack. It was just it, it was disappeared. So good. <laughs> Um, probably because I kept going back for it. It was pretty bad. <laughs> so what are we up to next year? Okay, our next ones we're up to would be our desserts, right? I think so. And actually, yes. this is non-cheese, but I'm sure we could find a way. <laughs> yep, well, any of the cheeses go with it is what I thought, especially the cheese curds. So this one, you have um, your strawberries, and you kind of can build this yourself. I have strawberries and then I also made brownies. You have brownies in there. These are made with orange olive oil. So whenever you pick up your uh, brownie mix at the grocery store, whatever it calls for in oil, cut that amount in half. So this particular box called for two thirds cup of vegetable oil. I cut it down to one third cup of orange olive oil and they put, come out perfectly. So now I have an orange brownie, which I can put my strawberry right on top of the brownie there. So you kind of are building it. Then we have another sauce that you're gonna see that you're gonna use on this. It's the raspberry almond drizzle. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is incredible. I've been doing this on crepes. I've been making torts with it. You can use it on pancakes and waffles over fresh fruit. It's wonderful. So just take and do a little drizzle of that right over your strawberry and your brownie. And then you'll have this wonderful flavor or you can eat it all separately too. But it's kind of, it's a little thick. So it goes on perfectly. I like to do also torts with angel food cake and pound cake that I cut up into chunks and I layer it in like a trifle bowl or a big bowl 
and then I take whipping cream, just do cool whip and put in some of our lemon curd, mix them together, fold it together and make a layer of that. And then a layer of the raspberry almond drizzle and then repeat. And it's beautiful. That's another great one that's for the holidays. And you can just um, take and scoop it right out of there. And it's fantastic that way. So that's our one dessert. You're killing and, me, Terry. I gotta try this. Yeah, give it a try. Tell me what you think. I like the orange that really comes through. Doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. We we do a lot of flavors in, in our brownies. We do hot chili. We do vanilla. You can do orange, lemon. All kinds of different ones work very well. But yep or we add a little raspberry balsamic to it also and that gives raspberry orange to those brownies oh yum i think but uh, this uh, makes just orange and that drizzle is just you could lick out that jar it's so good <laughs> and then we also gave you a second little treat um this is from abdullah candy actually they're lemon cream so the little candy you have in there is a lemon cream and that's a nice way to just kind of finish off our our cheese experience tonight with that little bit of lemon that's on there. Now let's, Carrie, let's open it up to everybody. Anybody can turn on their um, microphone if you would like and turn on your pictures so we can see some of you. And if you have questions, just um, ask us. I do, and then I do have a couple of announcements of a couple other classes coming up. So while you're getting all the, while you're turning on your mics and your pictures, um, let me tell you, we have a popcorn class coming up in November. It is Saturday, November 14th at six o'clock. This is gonna be a fun one. Now, some of you today picked up your popcorn kits. And just so you know, I didn't get the note in there today, but I will give you a call. Before the class starts, please pop up, take some of your popcorn, put it in your new popcorn popper and pop up one batch so that you have popcorn to try that night. Oh, Carrie? Vanilla Cardona. There you go. Little tag on there. Yes. Okay. Now with the popcorn class, um, that one is uh, the kit you can get with it. You can, of course, join by just with, like, as always, free. If you want the kit, you will get a little um, popcorn popper from Nordicware, a whole bag of our wonderful popcorn, and it's a popcorn that is hullless. The silks are so soft that they never get in your teeth. You will get a bottle a mini bottle of vanilla olive oil and a mini bottle of sweet cream butter olive oil, and then 10 samples of our different popcorn seasonings. And we're gonna show you how using olive oil in different seasonings on popcorn. And then we'll talk about add, doing those same type of seasonings to food and things like that. That one runs 38. If you don't need the popcorn popper, then it's a $28 class. So you can call up and get those kits anytime. We will start having them available on Saturday in the store. So you can pick them up anytime you just come in if you would like also. So that's also a fun one. Carrie and I are also planning a um, the Sunday after Thanksgiving at 11 o'clock. We're doing an appetizer cheese class. We figured that uh, Thanksgiving is going to be different this year. People are not going to be out shopping like they usually do. They aren't going to, we're not having as many Black Friday things. Um, and Saturday, small business Saturday shopping, a lot of people will be spreading it out instead. So we decided at 11 o'clock, we'll do an appetizer class. And then there happens to be a football game where the Vikings are playing at noon. So then you can eat all your different things. So as soon as we come up with that, um, with the total class, I will announce that. Within about a week and a half, we're launching our brand new website. Um, Paige has been working really hard, my daughter, to get a brand new update on our website. 
We have been working hard to add, adding new recipes. Everything will be new in the recipe area. So as the weeks go on, we'll keep adding more and more to that. There will also be a page there with our calendar actually working that will keep showing the upcoming classes on there. And um, you'll just have to bear with us as over the next month to two months, we'll keep adding things as they come up for you. It does um, also offer an easy curbside shopping for those that want to do curbside because we're still offering curbside. We're offering inside the store and we also, of course, will ship anywhere that you would like to. The popcorn class is November 14th. It's a Saturday at six o'clock in the evening. Also mark your calendars, December 2nd, we're on Twin Cities Live. Um, that's at three o'clock channel five. We'll put out a message about that also coming up and things. And we are planning out because of COVID, of course, we can't have our big holiday open houses that we have. So we may be doing like a two week open house and we will be planning very soon, letting you know what the gift will be for the holidays this year as our thank you to you. And um, we'll be getting out some fun information. We're gonna to try to be creative with that. And so there might be some very fun things, but we're already starting to get out our holiday things. I never get it out this early. I'm one of the few in retail that wait till about Thanksgiving weekend, but everyone is shopping right now. So over the next week or so, we'll hopefully get out most of our Christmas so that people can shop for that also besides the fall that we have. And we're getting in some new products. So please watch for some of the new launches on it because there's some fun things coming your way. Okay, everyone, I have a question. you have any more questions? Are you there? Oh, you okay, I hear you, Mugs. Um, <clears throat> everyone got the handout in their bags about both the popcorn and the cheese class? Yes. Was the list of cheeses on that uh, that, carry, that you two presented tonight? Because that would be really nice to have. Um, I think we did put on there what they were going to be. But okay, I'll have I, to look at it. Yeah. Yeah, if you didn't, um, you can just email me at team, T-E-A-M, at lovethatolive.com, and I will get them sent out to you. Great. Now, we had another question. What was it? Dried fruit. Nuts. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to say there was dried fruits and the nuts that were in your packet. I forgot that. Um, tonight, that's to add in with the cheeses just to have a little bit of crunch or sweetness to it. So tonight, that was an orange flavored cranberries with orange flavored almonds sauteed. And then we put a little bit of the dried pineapple in there just to kind of break up the cheese and the different flavors that we got tonight. So that was just a little extra. And I am so sorry. I should have told you that a long time ago. Any more questions out there? I hope you bought favorite? a lot of that ra raspberry drizzle because that yeah. is wonderful. Isn't that good? Yes, it's great. Yes, toasted pound cake with that on is really oh good. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> what were some people's favorites? Mm. Yeah, it was, it was just fun. Good. Love the raspberry chipotle. It was so good. Mike just put the name of the cheeses in the chat. So they're all in our chat area. Oh, what thanks. was that last? What was the last comment about the cheese? Oh, I just loved the raspberry chipotle. That was oh. probably my favorite thing. So delicious. Isn't that good? Have you had that before? No, first time. Okay, you'll have to get that and try that on some of your meats. You're going to go yeah. crazy over that. Yes. I like those dried fruits. Yeah, those are fun too. And it's nice that some of them have that nice orange. So it, met, it mixed with the brownies and different things for the fall flavor. Terry? Yes. Is it okay if I, I have a, some things coming up that are kind of fun? Please. Is it okay if I mention Let that? us know. Okay, I've been uh, actually working with Community Ed. Um, I think we have 12 districts around the state that have picked up the programming. Um, I have one class per month through Community Ed. 
and um, working to get kits and all that kind of coordination taken care of. But my next one is building a cheese and charcuterie board. That is November 12th. And um, so check uh, it out on my website. $25. There's a, um, a card in your basket that has my website on it. And uh, on, in December 10th, I have a Bubbles and Brie one coming up. In January, we have Cold Nights Hot Cheese. Um, and it goes all the way through May, one, one a month. And, uh, but also I have a kind of a fun um, prospect coming up with Redhead Creamery in Bruton, Minnesota. They have been, um, I've been a big supporter and proponent of them as well. And I propose that they, uh, they have a November box coming out. And that is, uh, you, couldn't, you wouldn't believe the list of cheeses that are in that. And they are at about $105 for the box. It's all cheeses from around the state of Minnesota. There's a November box coming out. Haven't seen it on the site just yet, but it's coming. And then there is a uh, December box, similar thing. Uh, it's a, it's a, quite the opportunity to taste what we have here in Minnesota. And so I have two dates solid just yet, or I will be doing a free Zoom to talk about those cheeses and um, half of them will be a cheese and charcuterie board example as well. So that's just something I keep an eye out on my website. <laughs> I get around to updating it. I might need to employ Paige. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Carrie, I want to just tell him again, your website is found on the business card that was in your cheese kit tonight. Right. We do not carry the dried fruit. I actually um, got that at Cub and it was right in where they're um, kind of in the vegetable area and fruit area where they have um, candy and nuts and berries that are basically in bulk. It was right in there and they're under salad fixings. They have a variety of flavors. Mike put the website in the chat. Okay. And Mike put their website right in the chat. Mike, you're on top of things tonight. Carrie, any other things you have coming up? No, I think that's uh, just a quick update. And like, okay. like you, just the pre preparation for the holidays. For me, it started like back in July and um, seems to be just hitting stride right now. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Well, I have two other fun things that are going to be coming up. So be watching for these two things. Um, very shortly, we're going to be um, putting out about, I think it's about 25 recipes. We're going to send out through email. And um, there are some great recipes on there. And then we'll be offering a bundle that comes with it. So it'll have in the bundle will be all the products you need from our store that will make those recipes. All of them are very simple. There's some breakfast, there's some lunch, there's dinner and snacks and desserts in it. So there's all kinds of things because we're all getting a little bored of eating the same things at home. We get into a rut and now we're all cooking a lot. So we're trying to give you some really simple ideas to um, be a little more creative in the kitchen but not add time in things. We, we are really striving to help people be creative in the kitchen and to keep things interesting for them, but not to add work. We want you just to have fun. We also are going to have, um, I'm gonna be launching some mystery bags soon. Mm -hmm. And we decided this is a great time. And what you'll do is you'll come in and we'll have some mystery bags for like 20 or $30. And in that you will get product that's at higher value in there. So you'll get a nice value for what is in it, but you won't know what is in the bag. And when you get it home, you will take it out and you will find all kinds of new fun things to use in your kitchen that you probably would have never thought about buying. And we'll give you some ideas with that. Each kit could be completely different as you come in. Um, there are not gonna be uh, 10 of every single one of them. We're gonna just put some together to have fun. That way people can give them as gifts at Christmas or just take it home so that you will finally break out and try something different that you normally haven't in our store. You maybe haven't seen in our store. Um, a friend of mine does this at her store and she started doing it three times a year and people line up outside her doors for these now because they have learned to have so much fun. So it could have a spice, it could have a sauce, it could have a mustard, it could have a pasta. Um, 
a seasoning. It could have a variety of things. So watch for when we launch our mystery bags. Italian type salad olives and pesto and aioli. It's right off of Weaver. Oh, okay. Um, so we have all kinds of little different things coming there. Any other final thoughts tonight? I just had one quick one. Um, yes. I've had uh, folks gift these virtual events to somebody and that is really a nice, it's a nice gift and it's um, especially folks that can't get out. We're gonna have a long winter. Uh, give them a, a virtual experience like this. It's a, it's a simple thing to do just to, if, especially if you can't make it, um, gift it to a shut-in or somebody else who just needs a little bit of extra something fun, see some other faces. Yes. Any other questions to finish our night about what we did tonight or anything that's happening at the store in the future or with Carrie? Okay then. Well, I want to thank Carrie for having another great successful night. Mike, thanks for adding our comments in there. And as always, my daughter Paige, she always keeps us going in our, um, our electronic world. Thank, world. Goodness. thank goodness. What was that? Oh, exactly. You're echoing. Oh, and then thanking Paige to helping us with our electronics. So we look forward to seeing you in the store soon. Remember, we're open 10 to 6 every day. And we, um, as always, you can come into the store. You can do curbside pickups, call us. We can walk you through things. We'll be posting soon on Facebook, a lot of different pictures of the store in different areas and different new products. So you can find things or we will ship also. And feel very safe to come in our store. Um, we try and our customers have been very good about wearing masks and social distancing from themselves. We just changed around our whole store so we have more room um, to move and social distance. So that really helps. It opens up our store a little bit more. So thanks so much for joining us tonight. Oh, thank you. Was this was fun. Bring the bottles oh, back. someone asked me about bottles. No, recycle your bottles. The health department does not allow that any longer. So just recycle them. Thanks, guys. Have a great night, and we'll see you at the store soon. Be sure to join Thank us you. for popcorn night. Thank you. Bye. -bye. You're Thank welcome. You.